Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, everyone! Welcome to the Christmas Countdown Show! You've made it. Yes. It is November 5th is our the actual date. The actual date, but the in real life. Date. In real life for us. But when you're listening to this, it is November's 8th? 11th. 11th. Yeah. I can do Four math. 4 plus 7 equals... That's right. 11. Yay! I don't like the maths too much. <laughs> um, but hi, my name is Eric Peterson. I'm here with my good buddy, Danny Jordan. Hello. Uh, we have Chris Sisley with us coming live from Brooklyn. On the ones and twos, On the ones and twos. Er, 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 yep. And then we have Emilio over here who just got a camera, so we know that he's alive. He did. Reporting and live from... He's back in Lambo. What, what? <laughs> no, no, I think he's in the uh, the Arctic. Oh, again? There's a polar bear behind Watch you. Watch out, Emilio. He's running at you now. <laughs> Great. Oh, this good thing so good. Emilio's a magician. That's good. He's, and he just magicked himself to Hogwarts. To Hogwarts at Christmas. That's and it's a nice Christmas. One. Oh. That's a nice one. You know, I actually just found I just found a podcast uh, that is it's not even really a podcast. It's like an a Spotify track, essentially, that you can go to sleep because I love sleep stories, right? Yeah. And I have calm, but sometimes I don't want to listen to the calm app and I want to listen to something else. Nine. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so you can go on Spotify and look up sleep stories, and there's Ooh. a Hogwarts at Christmas one that's like four hours long, and it's like a guy reading with a, a thick Scottish accent, and he's talking about Hogwarts, and they're getting everyone ready for Christmas. And so there's like the music of Hogwarts, and there's kind of the crunching Whoa. sounds of snow, but he reads very, very slowly like there's huge pauses between okay. like every couple of words yeah and it's very easy to fall asleep to check it out is it like a new story that was written specifically for that or is he reading from no it's a new Harry story Potter. it's oh, like okay. a general just like the people of hogwarts preparing for christmas the, the time. stuff that got cut out of the book yeah that yeah nobody like, wanted to read just, about yeah at it's all. it's just i think some what happens of, between the quidditch match exactly, exactly and the battle with you know yeah. voldemort exactly that's exactly. what happens yeah. um, but it's very good yeah, I'm still, uh, I have to admit, I'm yes. still in my head about something that happened at the beginning of this episode. What's that? And and for people to get it. 10 seconds I deep. I know. For people to get it, they're going to have to go watch the video episode. Really, this is just a tease sure. to try to get people to go watch the video. So our music plays at the beginning. Yes. And for people who listen to the show, you're probably dancing. Yeah. Eric and I have made it a thing. Yes. Because there are cameras now, a part of our show. We dance. I think and we danced even before cameras. But yes. We probably yes. did. You're right. But now, like, it's captured. Yes. And today, I went up for like a double high five, <laughs> and you were off in your own I world. was doing a boop. I like the high yeah. note in the music, and I was highlighting the high <laughs> note. I didn't realize that. And I went, bump, bump. And I was like, well, if we're on a wide shot there, that's going to look really funny that Danny's just high fiving. I saw your arms go up out of my periphery. But I thought that you were also highlighting the. It was the not uh, individual choreography. It was group choreo that I. But we didn't have a rehearsal. Well, there was before no rehearsal. This, I was you know, unaware. It's been and a I rough don't do last too well few with days. Choreography anyway. <laughs> yeah, you're a mover. That's right. Same I, for me. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, Danny is. Danny is sick. Everybody. It's true. Danny uh, has been dealing. <laughs> that sounds, <laughs> that's the way you set that up. Like, <laughs> like out of nowhere, like you're like. Dying sick. Like now the violin starts I'm coming. Sorry, everyone. Everyone. Danny is. Danny Do you know? I'm sure some people are like. Oh, probably no. grabbed their steering yes. wheel. No, Danny just has like the flu. He's he's gonna be fine. Yeah, just the flu. Only but, the worst flu I've had in like <laughs> my whole entire life. But I'm on hopefully on the backside of it. Hopefully. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be sitting here in this space with you guys because I wouldn't want to expose you guys uh to that. It's been a pretty brutal uh last three or You've four. You've lost days. some fluids. I have. Um I've probably <laughs> lost a lot of weight. That's a way of saying it. That was very classy. I was like, how are we gonna describe what I've been through <laughs> over the last few days? But it started with Riley. We talked about it in episode three, yeah. my daughter, that she went home with a stomach bug. And then about three, three and a half days later, right after I was celebrating at the Dodgers yeah. uh victory rally that they had at Dodger Stadium. We were so lucky to get tickets to go. And the next morning I woke up and I was like, I don't know, man. Something feels off right yeah. now and i was like i'll take a little pepto bismol sure it's saturday it it's dadder day i don't have excuses <laughs> today day. that's what i call it dadder day and so i take the kids to gymnastics then i'm sitting there while they're in class and you know how you like really have to start like <laughs> breathing <laughs> and yes. my kids are in class and you know we know people at gymnastics now so people want to sure. talk to me yeah, yeah, yeah and i'm like texting with my wife i'm like get me out of here i was like well, she's at work she's right. cutting hair and i'm like 
I'm in a rough spot. I was like, I don't know how the rest of today is going to go. It's like the class ends. I'm like, girls, you got to get your shoes on. They're like, can we get lollipops? I was like, there are no, no lollipops, lollipops today. Get in the car. No, seriously. And like, and then I'm seeing people I know. They're like, hey, how you been? I was like, we are so good. Have a great weekend. Nice to see you. It's so nice to see you. And I was like, I feel like such a jerk, but Were I you worried care. you were going to have a problem out of the top end or the, bo- or the bottom end? <laughs> oh, we're really pulling back the curtain, as we like to say here on the show, right out of the gates. <laughs> I just knew something. Um, you need to not be around people. Something was going to happen. Sure. And yeah. I needed to not do it yeah. at gymnastics. Did you know um, yeah. that if you feel like you're going to Ralph, that if you hum, you cannot throw up while you're humming? Well, I should have been humming all day Saturday. So <laughs> this is, uh, this is uh. a trick that I read somewhere that if you ever feel like I'm going to be sick and you just need to like sort of like stop it for a second right. to get yourself out of a situation. If you mm, just hum like that as long as you can, there's something about like the muscles mm. in your throat cannot send something up while you're humming. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't, it's not going to like stop you from being sick, but if you need, you know, a brief moment to okay. exit a situation. Yeah. I needed that. Yes. Um, it's sort of like, you know, how they say, oh, did it go down the wrong pipe? Yeah, but yeah, that yeah. technically can't happen because when you're, breathing doesn't like the valve close off and like food can't yes but that is there are two pipes right but doesn't like if you're breathing doesn't one of them close yes. as opposed to when you're swallowing so your food actually can't get into your lungs no no it's not <laughs> going to go into your lungs but it can you can get stuff in the top i think of the but it doesn't actually go down no you're not going to like have like pipes. some you know beef bolognese in your lungs what happened oh he's got beef of the lung <laughs> beef of the lung <laughs> i got the beef lung pop <laughs> I got the beef long pop. A little pop. Zoolander ain't reference. Ain't got much time left. Right. But anyway, it's been a, <laughs> um, a rough last few days. And what it made me realize is how dedicated I am to this podcast. Yes. This, is, this podcast has become like marriage for me, right? Okay. Because when you, you know, give your vows, right? You say, no. uh, till death, do us part. Tuesday, I will be there every in Tuesday. In sickness and in health, mm-hmm. right? In sickness, I am here. For this show. We appreciate it. And I've got a stack of Tums hidden behind my cool little he tree does. over here just in case. Um, but uh, but hopefully I'm on the backside now. But um, yeah, the one, th- I said this to Mila before we started recording. I said the one silver lining. Riley got sick. Mm-hmm. I got sick. Emerson unfortunately got s- sick last night. Yeah. We're getting it out of the way before the holidays. This is true. This so is true. hopefully. Have you had your a, flu shot? I have. I have not. Yeah. I need to get mine. But it doesn't project you from the stomach flu this is true i know yeah. norovirus i've spent a lot of time laying in bed reading about that's what norovirus this really? last week yeah uh, it's brutal yeah. anyway shall we maybe you talk know christmas talk christmas uh if you've stuck around this long and you're new to the show <laughs> and you're like wow i came for christmas and all these guys are talking about us being sick uh welcome. welcome we're so thrilled to have you uh please make sure you do subscribe to the show <laughs> we promise we don't always talk about uh no. stomach viruses no. and all that sort of stuff but we do talk about what's going on in our lives in real time and tis the season for flu and sickness that's right. so that's that's what we're navigating we like to be real with you guys uh but please make sure you do subscribe rate and review wherever you're listening to the show uh if you are not following us on social media already you can do so at Christmas Countdown Show on Instagram, Threads, TikTok, and you can watch full episodes and see Emilio in his beautiful green screen room that we yep. reference. Yep. Uh, whenever we say a room, I, I don't know if we actually like alluded to this in the last episode, but we make Emilio cut in the video. So if you're like, wait, why are they talking about these random places? Go watch the video. It's more work for him. It's more. That's really what it's all about. We're, we're cruel Scrooges over but here. That's what we are. Our, do you think that, Emilio, do you ever feel like Bob Cratchit over there? Wait, he's sitting. What? So look odd. at him. He's, he's sitting he's in the county in, house. He's in the count house. <laughs> but for the Muppet Christmas Carol yeah, yeah, version, yeah, yeah, yeah. One I mean that's the only right. Christmas Carol. And the rats are running. Well, I wouldn't around say the, the only. There's the Mickey Christmas Carol, which is also it's the very, most very important very one. But the most important. He is not wrong. That's true. That's the most accurate thing Emilio has ever said. Yeah, I appreciate I like that. He's getting in on the. I love that. Here. I love that, Emilio, enough. But uh, I do want to shout out, you know, our Patreon is growing and yes. we're so grateful for people. Uh, and I will, you know, before we shout out the Patreon, I do want to point out that we finally have fulfilled our promise. Speaking of up. video and visuals, if you're not watching, go to youtube.com slash countdown network. You can see that all the ornaments that we have received over the years here on Christmas Countdown are now up. They are. It is. It's not only one of the more heartwarming things I do every holiday season at my house. It has become one of the more heartwarming things I do every season on this show. Yeah. And we were talking about it this morning while we were putting them out, that how amazing is it that people send us these ornaments, but like the representation of where where these are from. Yeah. I mean, we have this ornament right next to you is from Kenya. Yep. 
which is amazing. There's some from Ireland. Yeah, we have one from Memphis, from St. Jude. Yeah. Uh, New we've York got City. Dubai. Yeah. What else am I seeing? Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. Utah. Um, Wisconsin. Onions, wherever those are from. Yeah. I guess France, maybe, or... Or from America. Okay. That's how we say okay. onions. Okay. But onions. it is just so darn cool. And, and I, I'm glad that we took the time this morning yeah. to do it before we started recording. It does. Even as I gaze upon your lovely face here, the oh. uh, the addition of the ornaments just over your face and your head look great. They really do. Yeah. I looked mediocre until this episode. Yeah, it was but a little boring before. But now out. if I get a little like bored with whatever you're saying, I can just like glance a little bit to the left and uh, I can look at those beautiful ornaments. That'd be a really funny strategy if we each worked out that like we put our favorite ornament like, <laughs> on the other person's tree right, so that we could look at it. And you're like, are you you keep moving your head back? Are you, are you looking at me like, or are you looking uh, at the... Eric, can you just move forward? Oh, that's there better. We go. There's my favorite deer. Uh, <laughs> why are you calling me deer? Anyway, speaking of our Patreon, we do have uh, some new people who have we joined do. Uh, since we last recorded, so we do want to shout them out. We do. We got to say quick. hello and a Merry Christmas to Aaron. Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Yes. Uh, to Tress. Thanks for joining Tress. Tress. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. We got Lee. Lee. What up, Lee? I, can we go back to Tress? I've never heard that name before. Have you heard that name before? Tress. I don't know that I have. Tress. T-R-E-S-S. I wonder if it's short for something. Tressame, like, tress, ooh la la, trestle, tress, tress. Should we just say ooh la la whenever ooh we la refer la to tress? C'est magnifique, Merry Christmas. Do you remember that commercial? Tressame, tressame. Is it like a soap or something? Ooh la la, it's a shampoo, shampoo, and conditioner. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, there you go. Uh, welcome, Tress. Welcome, or Tress. Ooh la la. Should we say? And uh, Lee, and then and last but not least, Debbie. And I actually, I think since we started recording, we may have had somebody else Look sign up. Let me go. Let me go here. Uh, officially, yes, Melissa. Melissa, you yes. just made it just in time for recording. Merry Melissa, Christmas, and Melissa. she's a tree topper. Ooh, another so tree Melissa's topper. So Melissa's going to be getting one of our uh, show ornaments. We'll be sending that out to Melissa. Uh, and we talked about. I got to figure out how we do this. We talked about putting like the names or like maybe pictures yeah. of our tree topper patreons on our, on our tree tops. Yeah, I, I don't know how we, we do that. Well, if they're cool with sending us their picture, we can print them out. And then we'll like attach them to yeah. like the hook or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay, I'm in. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to join the Patreon, just go to patreon.com slash Christmas Countdown Show, uh, or you can click the link in the episode notes, and that'll get you right to our Patreon. And you can join the most massively merry community in the world. Uh, honestly, they just uh, posted in the group the other day about one of my favorite things that the Patreon group does. What's that? The annual christmas card exchange yes dude i love that they do this yeah somebody said last year they got like 12 or 15 cards or something like amazing. that that's amazing from people all around the world again it, we are global from canada to ireland to the uk um so if you're just looking for a group of people who love christmas just like you uh, and just as much as you uh check out the patreon and you'll be connected to those people through our private facebook group absolutely very, very cool uh we should probably do some uh rate and reviews here we should a lot have been coming in we got a lot of reviews to read let's get to it let's uh i'm gonna jump on the first one here okay uh this is from christmas guy number one it's Ooh, good that's a bold that's statement a, wow that's i like, like that. my grandfather on his license plate it was a1 gambler mm. and i remember one time we were at the bank and some guy walked up to him at the atm and goes then why are you here <laughs> it's like okay he's like because i gamble with a1 sauce yeah i a love <laughs> a1 sauce it's my favorite steak I, sauce. I, I have a very sensitive stomach <laughs> i like to <laughs> I gamble. I'm on, an A1 gambler. And I'm an A1 gambler. Wouldn't that be know? funny if that's what that meant? Oh, my gosh. Oh my I goodness. love that. All right. Christmas guy number one says, obsessed with a uh, five golden stars. Yeah. And Christmas guy number one says, I love your guys' show so much. I first found it only a couple episodes into the first season. Wow. And fell in love. Uh, y'all bring such a bright light to my holidays, and all my family know y'all as there's a lot of y'alls in here. So I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna adjust my reading of this. Okay. I love your guys' show so much. I found that I found it only a couple episodes into the first season and fell in love. Y'all bring such a bright light to my holidays, and all my family know y'all as my Christmas podcast. Oh, that's awesome. I re-listen to all the episodes every year, and when y'all post posted your new episode i actually screamed i'm not joking <laughs> i love listening to it when i go to bed and when i'm getting ready for school thank you guys so much i love my christmas podcast Aww. from jude thank you so much and i hope jude's like i live in boston i just wrote y'all because y it was easy 
Um, <laughs> but no, I, I gave Jude a, a southern accent, and maybe he doesn't have a southern accent. Maybe you know though. I started and writing. Jude might be. I write y'all girl, right? a yeah. lot of times because of my wife. She's mm. like gotten me into saying y'all because she's from the south. Yeah, I, I say but, y'all. I, it, it feels like a safe way rather than saying like you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no. say y'all, so it's yeah. a little bit more inclusive. Yeah, everybody. Um, I realized a little while back though that for many years I was spelling y'all wrong. How are you spelling it? I think I was writing not uh, W L. No, no, no. <laughs> wall? No, no, like Y A W L. Y'all. y'all. <laughs> no, I, I think I put the apostrophe in the wrong spot. Y apostrophe A L L. But I was doing Y A apostrophe L L. Yeah. Oh. Yo. 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 You know how I realized that was, you know, Facebook is really great because it'll like, on this date, sure, seven yeah. years ago, and you're like, yeah. God, why did I write that stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I was an arrogant human being. Uh, and I realized going back to those memories that I used to write y'all like that. There you go. There anyway, you go. Jude, we appreciate Thank you, you so, so, so much. And Jude, Your another Christmas person podcast. in school. Yeah. I, I, this is wild to me that we are so big. We're reaching the youth of America. Should we be like sharing more important messages here than like, I'm sick and I've got a stomach <laughs> bug? <laughs> Barfing. <laughs> if you're going to spew, spew into this. Um, Do you know what that's from? You you said Christmas. earlier, and Christmas. I feel like I should. It feels like it's got to be like Fast Times at Ridgemont High or something. You're wrong, but you're not like way not off the wrong? mark. Okay. Um, you want to give me a hint? We've been uh, playing this game at home a lot. Guess okay. the guessing game. Um, Chris, something. what's a good hint I could give? The the title is two words, okay. and they both they yeah. uh, they're alliterative. Ooh, yeah. Uh, alliterative two words. S N L. That's your next clue. Oh. Yeah, that's a good one. So it wouldn't be Night of the Rocks, but that's too many words. Nope. 90s. 90s. If you're going to spew, not. If you're going to spew, spew into this. <laughs> oh, Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Uh, party time. Excellent. <laughs> we're kind of like Wayne's World. We are here, very we? much like Wayne's World. I know, except we're not in our mom's basement. That's right. That's we right. are at the holiday experience. Uh, but anyway, thanks, Jude. We yes. appreciate you very, very hey, much. Hey, Jude. Dun, thanks dun, for dun. the review. Wait a second. Yes. Do you remember? Yes. We talked about this recently, and we've talked about it every season, that one of our favorite reviews ever came from a kid who, who listened to a podcast. Under the sheets. And I swear to God that kid's name was Jude. Are you back, Jude? Is this the Jude? Is this the Jude? We Jude. need to know. We Jude, you got to DM us. We, yes. we need to know, are you still listening to the podcast under the blankets yes. or are you least able to, <laughs> to listen? Live your to, truth. Yeah, live your truth. Uh, if not, tap twice. Yes. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we'll hear it through your phone. Uh, all right. Next up, we've got coming to us from Knuth, I'm guessing. Knuth. Knuth 60. And uh, as is always fun on our show, the title is cut off. Fa la 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 la, my long l- lost friends. Hey, my long lost, lost friends, friends, friends something like that. awesome guys, coolest guys I've ever known in my life. Christian something boys. like that. Yeah, something like that. Uh, five golden stars yeah. uh, from Knuth 60 or Knuth. And uh, they say, I am well known for being a Christmas obsessed person. It was my delight to find a podcast that shares my love for the season. Great content. And the two of you are awesome. Yes. I honestly was down heading into the season thinking I've worn my family down with my Christmas cheer. Thankfully, things like this show and two new granddaughters have refueled my Christmas cheer, and I'm never looking back. You tell them, Knuth. Yeah, Knuth. Thank you, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, I love that. That's a good one. That's so sweet. And this has really spanned the age gap here. It There's really has. going to school and a grandfather. Yeah, or, or grandmother. grandmother. We don't know. We don't know. I know that's the fun of it. But uh, thank you, Knuth, and thank you, Jude, for your very, very kind words. Uh, if you want a, a chance to have your review read right on the show, you can submit one on Apple or now on Spotify. You are able to post comments on individual episodes, and we have started yes. to look at those, and we're starting to screenshot those, and we'll be sharing those uh, in future episodes. Or you can just email us, Kringle at ChristmasCountdownShow dot com, uh, and uh, we will share it here on Ye Old Pod. I love that. Um, we have a few things to talk about. Before we get into, we have a game today. Oh, we should tell what the our. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's too early. It's too our, early. The, How long our, have we been going for, Emilio? Uh, Twenty-four minutes. We sure. still got sixteen minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, come on, calm oh down. Gosh, that, I know why that, you want to get so ahead of ourselves. You got me there. <laughs> um, no, this is part two of our top ten Christmas feelings. Yes. Uh, so this is going to be five through one. And I got to say, 
I thought that our 10 through 6 really was one of our best episodes. And we've gotten a lot of people that have reached out that have yeah. said that it was one of the best. Biest. Biest. One of the best episodes. <laughs> it was all the Scandinavian people. That's who what it was. I remember Dude. that. The Swedish chef. That's right. Um, but no, so this is going to be 5 through 1. So before we get to that, we have got a game today. We have some Christmas news. But we have a couple small talk things we want to talk about. Yes. One of them being Christmas catalogs. Oh. I'm starting to get them. I, I got an LLB one, LL Bean one yesterday. Yeah. Um, have you gotten a bunch of Christmas? We have. Well, remember I shared earlier that I was so torn because the Amazon one came so early, Very early. Yeah. this year, and I was like, it's barely October, and I was talking, I was, yeah. you know, torn over like living my truth, you know, being this Christmas lover who's like bring on the holiday season, but also having children now and and wanting them if they so choose to have like a sort of shift from summer to sure. fall spooky season dressing up yeah. going trick-or-treating and so i've actually held back the catalogs i've been keeping sure. them on my desk and actually this or no, it was last night at dinner uh i br- i brought in behind my back and we're you know as i was sharing just a moment ago we're playing this guessing game a lot yeah. in my family we're like i'm thinking of a thing and so i was like i'm thinking of something that's paper and it has toys inside of it and then my girls were like, uh, the catalog. And I was like, yes. And so like, I pulled it out. And so at dinner yeah. last night, they started looking through the Target catalog. And then Riley at breakfast this morning while she's eating her blueberry muffin, she was looking through. And I was like, do you see anything in there you like? And so it, it's fun because like we had the season of spooky. And yeah. now they're having the season of like dreaming over what gifts they may want for the I, holiday season. I went over to my brother Kyle's house the other day and Waverly, my niece, uh, who will be three here in a few days. Right. Um, she's just, I mean, just at such a great age and me now that my kids are older like i really love talking to the little little kids yeah. and remembering them at that age and she was like it did you know it's fall and i was like <laughs> i did know that and she goes and next comes winter time and i was like yeah and she goes and then it's christmas and i was like yes oh that that's just the so best cute. just so cute has she been looking through the catalogs do you know i don't think she's looked at catalogs yet so you're at this interesting transition point right because you have a teenager like a solid yeah. 14 year old teenager now like, yeah. does she get excited about the catalogs anymore or is that not a thing i never see my daughter I, oh, really? <laughs> I don't know. No, uh, I'm only halfway joking. She is so busy. <laughs> right. Even when we went over to my brother's house, my niece w- Waverly was like, where's Sophie? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know where she is. No, I know where she is. She's in uh, tech for her show at oh, school fun. right now. So she has very late days. She has rehearsals on the weekends. So she has no time to uh, be that uh She's she's not there yet. She's trying right. to get through the day or the week, right? And then we will get to Christmas. Plus, I mean, she's in high school. But I will say or, this: yeah. just today, before she left for school today, she said, "Daddy, can you like make sure that you get the all the Christmas stuff into the house so that we can start oh. putting stuff up?" And I said, "Yes." I like will. today, she wants to do that. That's today. what she said. Oh, yeah. that's the best. And I asked. I said, uh, which is a little transition to our next thing that we were going to yeah. talk about: is uh, is it okay for me to put up? We mm. usually do two trees. You know, we do a fake tree in one corner and then we get a real tree. Right. Is it okay for me to put up the fake tree without the family while they're mm. all at school and work? They I, said they said yes. But you know your family better than me. And I'm not going to put anything on it. Like right. the decorating of the tree. Like you're going to put it out the stand. Put and out then the like stand. Stack it. Stack it up. And that's Maybe it. put lights on it. I do you think know. that's a bridge too far? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I, look, I think you're kind of right. Your family loves Christmas. We do. They are obsessed. And I feel like though they may not be like super upset, they might also be a little bit a little hurt, bummed yeah. that they weren't. They may not realize that it matters to them until they didn't get to be a part of it. Yeah. So maybe, I'll put it up, but I won't put lights on it, or maybe put it like half of it. Or I put and out, I, I got halfway through and I just thought I needed you guys. I, I needed to be you here. guys to be there. The rest they're gonna of the be like, way. "Daddy, we're never here. We're also busy. We asked you to put up. <laughs> Why the did tree? you put up the tree? We thought it was gonna be fully decorated. <laughs> what is wrong with you? You've ruined Christmas." Uh, and, I'm, and Miles is like, I'm never singing a song yes. ever again. Uh, I don't know. You know your family better than me. I, I think for me, like, if I came home and Lynn had put out all the stuff. Right. I don't know. I don't know if that would bother me. But that's what I'm saying. I'm not going to decorate it. Right. I'm just going to assemble it. You're starting. You're staging. I'm staging. See, you're yeah. It's like blocking rehearsal. And I'm and I'm willing to move it if people don't like where it's yeah. at or anything. I think I'm going to do that. And yeah. I may even... Put the lights on, but I will not light them. You won't turn them on. That's How a bold that? move, though. Because don't you want to know that they I'm all the work? Only, yes. Well, I will test them <laughs> off of the tree 
right? I will test to make sure the strand works <laughs> right. off of the tree. I will put it around the tree, mm. but I will not do the inaugural bloop tapping of, of the, of the button. Yes. Okay. All right. That's my plan. I think, I think that's a good plan. Yeah. And if it backfires, it's not my I'll fault. let you all know about it. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be uh, good content. So does that mean that's going to happen today? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I've been so stuck in this debate over like, do I start now? Yes. Now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my, the answer yeah. is yes. <laughs> the answer is always yes. And I guess the, the thinking is like, I, I think about my electric bill. Like that, that's, that's one part of, sure. of my whole situation. Um, but at the same time, like I know that if I wait, then inevitably something might come up. And it's sure. like, if you know you have like a two, three day block right now you when can you do can it. do it, then at least get started on it. Yeah. So that way you're not kicking yourself like a week from now where like. And then you don't have that crazy day where you're like, Lisa just said to me the, the other day, she was like, when you start putting the roof lights up, mm. you don't have to, because inevitably what happens is I try to do it all in one day. Yeah. And then you're like either so exhausted or take some of the joy out of it or you're working against the sun is setting right. and you're still up on the roof and you're like, I shouldn't be up here at this point. It's 4.30 yeah. in the afternoon. It's already dark. Right. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a pro tip that I think we've talked about in the past is like in when I was in my younger years, you know, before I had two children and my back was bothering me all the time. I would do like the one day yeah. sprint, get it all done. Yeah. And then the next day I wouldn't be able to like You're stand dead. up straight. Yeah. And I was like, why did I do that to myself? Yeah. And so I think really staggering it. And the thing is like, if you put up your roof lights and some of that stuff early, nobody can really see yeah. that stuff if it's not on yet. Yeah. So you get that done maybe this week. And then like over the weekend, then you start putting out all the big the stuff in the stuff, yard yeah. and the inflatables. And then you have, you have like your inaugural yeah. lighting. So maybe I will. Yeah. Maybe I will start this week. I think you should. Once I feel like a normal yeah, human you're not being. Dying. Yeah, exactly. So I think yeah. this weekend is gonna be when I when I kick start it. So I'm curious, you know, for all of you who are listening, and you can actually let us know in the comments on Spotify. Amazing. Are your Christmas decorations up now? Do you wait until after Thanksgiving? What is like your time and that you put I, up? I would like to add a caveat to that question. Do you have an outdoor indoor difference mm. date? Because what we always used to do when we weren't so busy is we would go like day after Halloween, boom, inside yep. was Christmas. But we tried to respect the neighborhood <laughs> and not go full outside Christmas right. until probably mid November, maybe wait till after Thanksgiving. Yeah. But inside we went full tilt right away. So I, I always wonder if people have different inside outside uh, reveal dates. I mean, the inside is sort of like your your safety space, yeah. right? Like I think I saw some meme on social media yesterday, like, go ahead and put the tree up. Nothing else makes sense anyway. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I mean, why not? And and there have been studies. We've talked about this on the show that have come out that like Happier decorating people. for the holiday season people. makes people yeah. happier. You know, like how often do we get to the end of the holiday season and go, man, I wish I had these up for less time. Never. Never. You're like, oh, I really love the way my house looks. I'm bummed that Which tomorrow is it's why not going to look this way. I, I'm telling you, if I did not have, if I lived as a bachelor, I would be, do you watch Only Murders in the Building? Oh, yeah. I would be the Christmas guy. Like, I, my house would be Christmas <laughs> 365 days a year. I respect that. I would I would live it Like all outside the time. as well? Not outside. Oh, okay. But inside. But inside I yeah. would have Christmas lights and a tree up all year long. Okay. I love that. But, Let's pause real quick. But I'm, red fuzz hanging from your mustache. The other side, all the way to your far right. Did I get it? Yeah. Sorry. Go back. I love that, though. No, you can leave this in. Oh, you I, leave my in? mustache is getting out of control. I need to... It's still there. Hold on. The fuzz is still there. Did I get it? I think so. It was like... Hang it on. was far right, and then it like moved, and it was like hanging over your chin. I think is you it got alive? it. I think you got it. My mustache is very bristly right now. Well, it's been evolving it was a mustache then it became a goat again and now it it's back for a to minute. stash well i it was never really a full goatee but it well, i had a lot of like the rest of my face was but you grow fuzzy. such dense my goatee grows hair. so thick yeah they like you don't shave for a couple of days it looks like you got a full goat yes yeah yes in my goatee area and i uh, wish that i could grow the sides i you would don't love, grow here not really i mean it grows but it's very it can be a little um patchy and it just sort of it doesn't grow as fast. Okay. I mean, my mustache, I've only been growing this it's for wicked. maybe like three, four weeks. That's incredible. But it is, 
It's so it full. It looks like it's 80 years growing. It looks like it was glued onto your face. Yes. Like I, it, I, the shape I, of it I know. is so, like it it it, fra- it goes so right into full. your like smile lines yes. and it goes rounded right across it. I know. And it comes perfectly across I know. your lip. It, there's and there's like no a, maintenance on this. No. That is just like, it just like comes out of me. That's amazing. Yeah. I wonder why some people get that. So, like I grew a mustache once and I look like a creeper. Yeah. I will never grow I mean, one. I can't say I totally don't look like a creeper, but. No, you don't look like a creeper. <laughs> That Emilio's guy. like, hey. he's like, I think he, he goes, I've like been moving creeper. my chair further away for the last three weeks ever since he and showed look up. Look at that. Now thing. Emilio's in a cave. And now he's got a mustache. Oh, now Emilio's <laughs> got a mustache. She's like, now I got to do motion tracking. This is ridiculous. Oh, this is getting great. Uh, Amazing. Anyway, so lots happening. Um, speaking of, yes. big news that you need to reveal mm. to our fan base, to I our loyal listeners yes. all around the world. This is exciting. I can say as someone who's done this, this is a very big moment. In a person's life. Yeah. Reveal to the people, Eric, what you have done. I made a book. I made a book, everybody. Uh, If you follow my personal socials, uh, at Eric Pete on Instagram, uh, or at Eric Peterson 44 on TikTok, uh, I... Um, so I got inspired a little bit by Danny and a little oh. bit by my wife. Uh, my wife wrote a children's book called Spark the Theater Bug, which yep. was very cool. Um, Such a great idea. By and... Right. Um, I was like, I want to write a book, too. And so I wrote a thing called The Daily Actor Journal, 365 Prompts to Grow as an Actor and Artist. And it's basically a journal for actors uh, of really any age. I would say maybe not like, uh, you know, elementary school age actor. Not that there's anything inappropriate. It just is going to be beyond where they're at. Right. But if you're in like high school and above and you are an actor, uh, I think it's a great thing. It basically goes through uh, 365 days and there each month has sort of a different theme. That's awesome. Of, um, you get to talk about what you did today, what you learned today. Did you drink, drink enough water? Uh, there's a journal prompt, you know, like, um, you know, example, like reflect on the impact of physicality and movement in your portrayal of characters. Wow. And like, so really, Really like forces you to get introspective about mm. your process as an artist and a creative person, um, and I think it's pretty cool. And it's it's fully done now, and it's available on Amazon if you search "Daily Actor Journal." Dude, so if amazing. anybody out there is um, looking for a Christmas gift for somebody in their family who's an actor in any way, I encourage you to check it out. Dude, that is so awesome! Congratulations, Thank you very much. man. That is such a it's huge exciting. moment. I loved watching your video of you unwrapping the packaging of yeah. your first proof like it's such a you know it's kind of fun surreal experience too about that video that i posted is i knew that it was coming and i'd seen a few proofs before but none of them were the finished uh product okay and i had planned on like all right i'm gonna sit down and i'm gonna film it and i'm gonna like write out a script of what i'm gonna say and i really want to make sure i hit all the points of how i'm trying to sell the book and everything but then i was like I think it's actually better, and mm-hmm. I think in today's world, people want more authenticity. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to plan out what I'm going to say. I'm just going to really legitimately open it and look at it for the first time and have an honest reaction. And then I was like, I'm not even going to like try to edit this. I just posted it. And That's then great. It, and it was good, and people liked it, and people are talking about it and spreading the word. So uh, I'm happy about it. So, yeah, definitely check it out if I you can. I love that. I think it rings true. You know, we, We've talked a lot about that on the show, and I think it's why this countdown we're currently mm-hmm. doing is so... Uh, timely is I think more than ever because there's just so much out there and we're constantly having to decipher in our brains between what is what somebody really feels or what they say they should feel or was that a real reaction yeah who wakes up with a camera in their room filming them like follow me through a day of like being a something something and like well who set up the camera right uh, Jack, come on but like I think authenticity rings so true and I think the way you did it um was so perfect and to see like your genuine excitement over it so yeah please we'll put the link in the episode notes um for yours and if you're okay with it i'll put for lisa's as well yeah that'd be great uh and then mine if you're looking for books for people in your life i know people ask us about books and gift recommendations and speaking of i wasn't planning on talking about this but we just released we've never done this before i know where you're going with this we released our first ever holiday gift guide gift guide and it's awesome. It includes gifts for her, gifts for him, gifts for kids. Uh, we're working on like gifts for coworkers, mm-hmm. um, you know, kids books around Christmas, games, all these sorts of things that have to do with the holiday season. Uh, we have done sort of a deep dive into all the things that are sort of trending or what people are into or could be helpful for them in their lives. And if you're one of those people, it's like just simplify the gifting experience for yeah. us. Uh, we have done that. So we'll put the link for our 2024 gift guides in the episode. Uh, 
episode notes here as well. Absolutely. Um, and we'll add your book and, and Lisa's Fantastic. book to the gift guide. That sounds great. Um, now, speaking of books, uh, something very exciting is happening this holiday season. Yes. Um, a book, a beloved book, which is beloved actually book. in our gift guide, the best Christmas pageant ever. Yes. This book has been around for so, so long, written by Barbara Robinson. Yep. And it has been adapted into a major motion picture mm-hmm. by Lionsgate. And we need to talk about it. We absolutely <laughs> need to talk about it. Yes. So we were fortunate enough to get invited to the premiere, yeah. um, uh, which was at the Grove here in LA. Uh, Danny was going to come, but sadly got sick. But you did get to see the film. So you're they they get sent to me talk a screener. Yeah. And I got to watch it yesterday. Um, I got to go, though. I went with Miles. Uh, we had a great time. They did a great presentation. They had stuff for the kids to do, and they had snacks. And Miles got a balloon animal and a balloon like uh, candy cane and oh, stuff like that. Awesome. It was great. Um, but let's talk about the movie. We need to. Okay. First of all, I loved this book as a kid. Um, I remember my mom reading it to me all the time. Um, it's about the story. If you don't know the story of the best Christmas pageant ever, is basically there is this small town. Seemingly in the Midwest, uh, in the movie, it takes place in the 90s. Right. Um, and they're, they're a very basic kind of quaint small town. Everybody knows each other. They're, everybody's doing pretty well. Nice little place. There's one family called the Herdmans. <laughs> and the Herdmans have these six kids that nobody's ever really seen the parents. These kids are just the terrors of the town. They are stealing kids' lunch money. They're lighting, you know, shacks on fire. They're, you know, they're breaking fences and beating <laughs> kids up. And they're and all the kids are terrified of the Herdmans. And just steer even clear the adults, of them. even like the adults are pretty of wary of, yeah. of the Herdmans. <laughs> um, and so, another thing that's happening in the town is they're having their 75th annual Christmas pageant at the church. It's the Emmanuel Annual. Yes, the Emmanuel which Annual, which that, is a that great, rhyme made great, me very rhyme. happy. Yeah. And uh, normally, it's always done the same way. There's the same director, the same kids play the same parts. Uh, this year, the director, she sadly broke her legs, and so right. she's out. So there's a new uh, mom who's going to direct the show. And through a, some circumstances that I don't want to ruin for you, the Herdmans end up showing up at the church because yeah. they heard that there's snacks. <laughs> and so they see that there's this thing going on called the Christmas pageant, and they say, we want to be in it. We're going to be in the Christmas pageant. And all the kids, nobody wants to say no to them because the kids are scared of them. Right. The adults are scared of them. So it just sort of happens that this family of these sort of misfit rough and tough kids, the Herdmans, become a part and the main central characters in the town's Christmas pageant. Yeah. What happens then is, obviously, there's some hijinks and things don't go according to plan, but the at the end of it, without ruining, it, ruining anything, it is an amazingly heartfelt story about the true meaning mm. of Christmas and the real meaning of what the season is about. Yeah. Um, so that's what the story is. Now I'd like to talk about the film. We have to. I loved this film. You texted me. I texted immediately you afterwards. immediately <laughs> afterwards. I have some video that I will post on our socials. My son and I weeping, just crying, tears down our face, yeah. watching it. I, I legitimately think, this is a bold claim, I legitimately think that this might be my new favorite Christmas movie. Wow, I'm not. I'm not even kidding. I think I like it better than Elf. I like it better than a than, Christmas story. Than a Christmas story. Wow, I'd put it up there with like It's a Wonderful Life. Like it really, I, it hit me in such a deep way. Um, I love the story. I love the message. I mm. thought the performances were amazing. Uh, Judy Greer and Pete Holmes are uh, so good in it. Lauren yeah. Graham is a sort of cameo throughout it, um, and I, I said to Miles and my wife, and to you, Danny, yeah. that I don't think that a single movie has ever made me feel like I was a kid growing up in the Midwest in the 90s mm. in the same way that this movie did. That church looked like the church that I grew up in. The way that those people talked remind me of like the way mm. that the people talked in my life. The, the story of it, I think, is so heartfelt and so moving and so truthful. Yeah. And while this movie definitely has a, a, a faith leaning to it, yeah. um, I think that it's a great movie for anybody to see. Um, I, I, I really, I just loved it so much, and it has stuck with me. It's not just that I loved the moment that I watched it, yeah. but the next morning, the first thing Miles said to me, like with a tear in his eye, he goes, 
that movie was so emotionally and, and so so great. And I was mm. like, yeah, it was, buddy, wasn't it? It's yeah. like it was still like sitting really good and heavy on our hearts in yeah. a good way. Um, I just I thought it was so great. I thought the kids that were in it were great. Um, I actually know one of the kids, the kid that played Claude. His name's Matt. Oh, okay, uh, I can't remember his last name right now, but he I did a, a theater Matthew Lamb. Matthew Lamb. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did a uh, class where we were teaching kids in Burbank, and he was one of my students. Oh, really? There. And then he had this movie coming out, and he's, he was he's so, so great. good in it. Yeah. But I, I I could not recommend this movie in a more emphatic way. I just absolutely loved it. Yeah, it feels, going back to what we were talking about earlier on the show about authenticity. Yeah. It feels like such a genuine story. Yeah. Like how many times do we grow up in a town or a neighborhood where people have a certain feeling about other people in the neighborhood or mm -hmm. they, assumptions, yeah. yeah, assumptions about people. And we just don't know people's stories. Like one of the moments that really hit me the most was when they're delivering food to the families oh, in the town. Yeah. And the dad brings his kids and, you know, the wife who's directing the production along with him and they deliver a ham mm -hmm. to the herdmans and the excitement that the herdmans have. And he says something in the car that really stuck with me. Um, he says to them, Christmas comes for everyone. Yep. And it was just such a beautiful moment from the dad, the character Bob, you know, in the film to because he's not really heavily involved from a narrative perspective. He's right. sort of on the peripheral of all this madcap yeah. ness that's going on with the production and his daughter and what's happening at school. He's just sort of like the one in the middle that's hearing about it all sort of flying around him. Yeah. But all, all the while for the last however many years, he's been going over to this family's house and probably seeing a different side of who they are. And the fact that he brought, you know, his kids along and his wife along to see who, you know, what their story is. I just, I thought it was, it was so incredibly heartwarming. I thought, um, her name is, uh, uh, Beatrice Schneider who played Imogene. Yeah, so She's good. She's so good at being this horrible villain. Yep. And then she just rips your heart yeah. out of your chest because you see that like she just wants more. Yeah. And then when she, her performance is Mary in so the good. pageant at the end. I don't want to spoil anything, yeah. but like she not only brings the people like on camera, mm -hmm. like brings the house down, like as a viewer, like I was so choked up when she came walking yeah. out. I was like, yeah. yeah, she's there. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's so, so beautiful. And I, it also, I, it has like that perfect nineties glow yes, to it. hundred percent. The way that it's shot, which is amazing. And I think we have a lot of mom listeners to our, our, our podcast here. Yeah. It is such a story about the triumph of a mom. Mm which I love yeah. and like, and it made me think of my own mom and just like how much I love her and how hard she worked for me as a, yeah. as a kid and like volunteering time and, and trying to see the best in me and in other people. And so if you're a mom or you love your mom, you, you will love this movie. I the, the movie really is for everyone. Yeah. You know, whether you are a person of faith or not, um, it just, it leans into the story of what Christmas I think is all about for so many of us, which is community which is about including everyone, which is about hope and joy and light. Mm -hmm. And this movie has it in spades. It, it warmed my heart and it really felt like one of those like instant classics. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, in, in the times that we live in now, it's, yeah. it's an important movie with an important message about seeing the best in each other. And I, I think that people should definitely... Definitely go check it out. I cannot recommend this movie more emphatically. <laughs> so if you want to be moved just like we've been moved by the best Christmas pageant ever, make sure you go check your local listings. It is showing in theaters all around the world yeah. right now. So make sure you check it out. Um, all right. Speaking of fun things, I think it's time for a game. Let's do it. Chris, you got a game for us? Yes, let's do it. I have a new game. Ooh, a new, new one. game to the podcast. I'm so excited to bring it to you all. We've been playing it on Theater Countdown. We've been playing it on Disney Countdown, and we're finally able to bring it over to Christmas Countdown. Yes, yes. This game is called Christmas Filibuster. Oh, Ooh, like this is fun. This. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is festively fun. Sure. Festively fun, massively merry. Gigantic the way this works jolly. is, if you don't know what a filibuster is, it's just, <laughs> just when you talk as long as you possibly can to, to, so other people can't speak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's basically Usually like, in a political environment, we're going to do it in the Christmas <laughs> environment. So we're going to go back and forth. I'm going to give mm. both of you opportunities to just talk for about, we'll do 30 seconds. I have a timer I'll bring up in a moment. And just talk about the topic I give you. Whether or not you agree with it, it's not the point. You just have to talk about it for 30 seconds. Great. I don't know if that's enough time. 
<laughs> Frankly, there's not enough time. <laughs> there's never enough time. Right. All right. So we will start with Danny. Ooh. Okay. For the next 30 seconds, I would love for you to tell me why LED bulbs are better than C9 bulbs for decorating your house. Mm. Well, and go. First of all, what if I don't agree with that statement? <laughs> but I have to because that is what you do in a filibuster. You've got to find common ground with people. Here's the bottom line. We all know that living today is expensive, right? You know, and one of the amazing things about LED bulbs is they're going to cut your costs this holiday season. I was just talking earlier in the episode about how I was concerned about putting my lights up too early because of the costs that we're going to, that I was going to incur with all my electricity. So put the led bulbs up. They're getting better. The color's getting more accurate as time goes by. Mm. Well done. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. You did, you did reiterate what we talked about before about how not necessarily agreeing with it, but I will, I will slide because you kept talking. I did, the name of the but I wanted to live my truth, <laughs> you know, and I think that's what we're all. I about, will agree with whatever you say, Chris. I will just agree with it. <laughs> that, let's test that theory now. Oh, here we go, <laughs> Eric. For the next thirty seconds, I would love for you to tell the people why the plastic candy cane filled with peanut butter cups is the perfect stocking stuffer. And go. Listen, when you are looking for how to fill your stocking. You're looking for uh, economy of space. You're looking for price point that is going to be affordable for a family. And you're looking for the joy that it's going to bring to the person opening this stocking. Now, we have the perfect uh, item to fill. And that is the plastic tube filled with Reese's peanut butter cups mm. that has a little red top and it unscrews at the top, right? It First of all, it's going to fit nicely into the uh, stocking. And you can go either way. If you want to sort of uh, feature the fact that it's coming, the hook can come out of the top. If you'd really like to hide it, you can go with the shape of the, of the stocking. Now, what's really amazing about it is that as a parent, you can open these things if you're careful. Take one out, then reclose it, and you get a free one just for yourself, and the kids never are, are the wiser. That was Very strong. Good. That was strong. I took improv class. How do you feel about LED bulbs? <laughs> Let me tell you about LED bulbs. <laughs> uh, Danny, I like you're this up. Game. This is the yeah. last one for you. Is this for me tell next? Us what you look for in the perfect sledding hill. Is this no. for me? Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Uh, the perfect sliding hill, you know, is it's like the um, it's like the golden goose, you know, of, of the holiday season, right? You know, you want to make sure you've got one that has sufficient height and sufficient length. So you don't want you don't want your, your your sled ride to be too short, you know. I think a lot of times, you know, unfortunately when you're growing up in a town like Southern California, there's not a lot of big mountains around. So a lot of the hills you find not too long. So for me, I want to find one that's got sufficient height. And sufficient length. Also, you don't want to make sure there's no rocks around, right? Because if you go off course or if there's a tree, you don't want to run into a tree. You got to look out for obstacles. You got to look out for length and you got to look out for nice uh, compressed snow so that way you get some nice speed to have a nice long sled ride. Pretty good. For someone who Very did not good. grow up sledding. Pretty good. I am pulling that yeah. one out. Pretty good. Yeah. I feel like Chris is just picking things I know nothing about. Here's, <laughs> here's what I like. I, I agree that the 30 seconds is right for this format. I would love yes. to play this game where it's like five minutes. You have to talk <laughs> for five minutes, a true filibuster style, and you really have to just keep going. Yeah, because like I was real lost for a second there. I was like, where am I going to go? You were good, though. You were I, good. Because like, I've good. never had to go looking for the sure. per I just look for a sled hill. A sled hill. Like yeah. in Southern California, you can find a hill that has snow on it. That's a win. I like it. Well, very good. Thank you so much. This is the last one. This one's for you, Eric. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Give me a pitch for a Elf on a Shelf feature film with Ed Helms attached. Go. <laughs> now, we all know that Ed Helms <laughs> is the star of The Grinch, um, uh, the newest version of The Grinch. Uh, and Ed Helms now being so closely associated with Christmas of films. Course, yeah. uh, his voice is perfect for that little elf on the shelf. Now, here's what happens in the movie. Little Ed, because he's named after himself, he ends up falling, not by anyone. No child touches him. There's an earthquake in town because it takes place in Southern California. Mm -hmm. He falls to the ground, and little do we know, but as the, as the parent, I have failed. That was a bad one. I have failed. <laughs> no. That was... I had I was going somewhere. Basically, I wanted, the, the you, kid comes in, what are, sees the kid on the elf on the ground, yeah. blames his brother for knocking over the right. elf, and then there's major like family trauma over this argument. But then 
Ed Helms as the elf comes to life in front of the children to solve the family uh, fight and says, it was no one's fault. There was an earthquake. Didn't you feel it? Ke- check LA QuakeBot and you'll <laughs> see that there was an earthquake. It's no one's fault. And then uh, everybody celebrates Christmas. Is it a short? No, it's a it's a three it's, hour movie. It's a two parter actually. <laughs> two-parter. It's released it's like in wicked. two parts. There's a big cliffhanger when he falls <laughs> off one half the gets, shell. Yeah, He's that's hanging. Right. That's right, and yeah. that's the end of the first movie. And then you have to wait two years until the, the resolve <laughs> when it gets released. You know what this is two. reminding me of? It reminds me of the first time you and I met. <laughs> Do you remember when you were on the Broadway cast? Yeah. And oh, we played yes. an improv game yes. with you guys, with yes, you and uh, Jen Lyon. Jen Lyon and Will. Um, uh, is that Will Roll? Was it Will Roll? Will Roland, yeah. From uh, Dear Evan Hansen. Yeah. yeah. And it was an improv game where you guys had to go one word at a time. And, and we told a story. You had to write the synopsis for the musical called Dear School of Claws. Yes. Which was a combination of the three shows you guys were in. <laughs> And then you talked about a deluge curtain. Yeah. And then you each, Ben asked you guys to name your favorite song. You're like, uh, Blaze That Trail. Blaze That Trail. That was your, f- <laughs> that's what this is reminding this me is of. This is totally Oh, good. it all comes that was good. full circle. That was good. That was super fun. I like you that. You had me, like, you were said you weren't doing great, but like when you said, and little did they know, I was like, I, uh, I felt like know I what? said, I was like, and then they, the children have, because I started like three <laughs> sentences in a row without uh, finishing. Do you know who my dad always pointed out that Mike Ditka, who I love as a coach, um, would always, whenever he was on like ESPN, like countdown yeah. or whatever, he'd be, always be like, the bears need to, what they're looking to do is, okay, what we're looking, what we're, what we're talking about here. He would like start like seven <laughs> sentences in a row, but never finish anything. Yeah. And I felt like I did that a little bit. But you filled time. I did fill time. And I feel like that probably happens. Is there a winner monsters. to this game, Chris, or just it's everybody wins? The listeners. The listeners. I think Ed Helms wins. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now let's, we need, now let's break we this need down. To like, we need to talk about <laughs> yeah. this. Because it has come. I'm so to glad our you brought. It was that was the best thing to come out of <laughs> yes. your filibuster, maybe the game entirely. It was. It was brought to our attention. If you listen to the uh, the bonus episode from last yeah. week, um, uh, but also if you've listened to the podcast in general for the last three years, any time yeah. <laughs> that we have referenced the newer uh, animated version of the Grinch, yep. we have said the one with Ed Helms, right? and we always both not go. Yeah, we that's both go. Yeah, one. that's the one that we're talking about. It has come to our attention <laughs> through the Facebook group that Ed Helms is not in the new Grinch. Nope. The person who plays the Grinch is Benedict Benedict Cumberbatch. Bangwang. Bangwang. <laughs> and uh, Ed Helms was in the movie The Lorax. Yes. Which is also made by the same studio. Dr. Seuss. And Dr. Seuss. And so it's we're not completely crazy here. Yes. And also, I had to go onto Reddit, and I found that there was other people who had said, oh, Ed Helms in The Grinch. So we're not the only people. Now, okay. my real question is, did the people who wrote that Reddit thread listen to us and have we led a country astray they're like the number one christmas podcast told in the us world, that ed helms us. was in and they have never once lied on their <laughs> show in the, so yeah. uh i don't know what uh where that if we're the only ones who felt that way and we have led people astray or uh, what it is but the fact of the matter is we need to retract our previous statements yes our uh ed helms who's a great actor love ed helms is not in the grinch <laughs> and i need to come clean right now as if it weren't Already obvious enough. I've never seen the 2018 <laughs> version of The Grinch. <laughs> so it's really just my fault. So that I've been I am, agreeing with you yes. for the last three years. That's fair. Just, I was like, yeah, that seems accurate. Yeah, yeah. Of course he would be The Grinch. Of He's course. a great choice for The Grinch. Yeah. Oh, Benedict man. Cumberbatch. Can you imagine how many people have listened to our show and then gone to Christmas trivia? Like, he's the star of the new... Ed Helms. Ed Helms. Thank you very much. We'll take those points. Like, uh, no. Sorry. Benedict Looking for another answer, actually. <laughs> uh, they lied. That explains those negative reviews. That's uh, funny. Anyway, great game, Chris, as always. We appreciate you. Love that game. Uh, yes. And if you want to listen to some of those other shows like Chris was talking about, Disney Countdown, Theater Countdown, uh, we have other shows on the Countdown Network that do top 10 lists just like us. I love it. About Would You Believe It? Disney and theater. So you can look up Disney Countdown or Theater Countdown wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Yes, I think it's time for the list. Let's do it. Let's do it. There we go. All right, folks. So this is the top 10 Christmas feelings. Those little micro moments. Uh, part just two. as uh, Yes, part two. Uh, part two. Yeah. Uh, okay, so my 10 through 6, as we always like to uh, remind you, my first one was the feeling of family. Mm. 
Number t- uh, number nine was the feeling of community. Yes. Number eight was the feeling of magic. Number seven was the feeling of excitement. And number six was the feeling of being full. Mm. Being full full and blessed. Yep. Um, okay, so my number five. Okay, this is a good one. This is one of my favorites. Are we going to be all crying, are we gonna are cry out of the gates? Um, I mean, they're all pretty good. Okay. They're all pretty Here good. Go. You Buckle might. up. All right. um, okay, it's that feeling of when you're curling up on a great comfy couch, which, by the way, my family just got a new couch. Oh, did you really? And I am su- I'm such an adult now. I literally go through my day thinking about, I can't wait to go home and <laughs> sit on my new couch. <laughs> it's like, it's not anything really like that fancy or special, right. but we just, our couch had a big rip in it. We had to get a new couch. Uh, and it's so lovely. Mm. It's a li- Now it's more of a U-shaped couch. Oh. So we have a chaise on one side and then like a long end on the other side. So it's really The chaise like is vital. Very nice. For long very, very yeah. nice. Okay. So number five for me is the feeling of curling up on a great comfy couch with my whole family in their pajamas, tons of blankets, lots of Hallmark swag around us. Uh, some snacks on the table, warm drinks for everybody. The kids have made their crazy hot chocolate masterpieces. Mm. My kids love to like not just make hot chocolate. They put cinnamon sticks and gummy bears and marshmallows <laughs> and candy canes and like they get all crazy about that's it. Awesome. That's always really fun. Uh, maybe there's some holiday movie bingo cards. We all watch a Christmas movie, whether it's like a sort of like cheesy, you know, romantic, you know, Hallmark kind of movie, right. or whether it's like a classic, you know, something like White Christmas or Christmas Chronicles or something like that. But the feeling is Hig. Oh, that's the right. feeling of Hig, which we actually just on our bonus episode yeah. was were explaining to a, a nice uh, gal down down the street at the Bath and Body Works. So Hig, if you are unfamiliar, we have talked about it, but if you're new to the podcast, is a Danish term or Norwegian, is credited to both, uh, that describes the feeling of a cozy, contented move evoked by comfort and convivality. Mm. Convivality. What a word. Convivality. How many syllables are in that? Convivality. Five. That's a good word. But it's that feeling of coziness, yeah. right? And it's a an idea which I think perfectly describes Christmas time, but also as a way to live, to try to just live cozy. Mm. Like live warm and wrapped up and feeling like you're in a hug and with family yeah. and with good lighting. And, and it's just that whole feeling of coziness. So mm. my number five feeling is Hyge. Hyge. Spelled oh. H-Y-G-G-E. And it's a feeling. It's a word, but like it's less about the word and it's more about... It's a feeling. It's an essence. Yes, absolutely. I love that. That was great. I also love that you establish like or assign specific words to all of your feelings yeah. because I didn't really do that. And that's the fun of our shows that we always sort of, we, we come up with an idea sure. and then we both sort of like do our own take on it, which is really, really exciting. All right. So recapping my 10 through six, number 10, I had the oohs and ahs from the people when the snow starts falling on main street at the Disney parks. Uh, at number nine, I have the sound of laughter when your kids are playing with each other or their cousins on Christmas day. And number eight, I have the feeling of gratitude and sense of purpose fulfilled. I get when people share with us, uh, what Christmas countdown show means to them. Uh, number, uh, what would be next? Number seven, I have the feeling of hope and community when you're out in public and number six, after dinner, bellies full, uh, candles flickering, smiles on people's faces. That sense of fullness that we talked Absolutely. about. Uh, and then let me get back to my next next list here. Um, all right. So I have to share that for my top five, it was so hard to assign numbers mm. to these ones because they're all so personal to me. Um in their own way. So I think we shared this on our, you know, part one is that like, even though we assign numbers to them, these all matter they to all us, but you got to put them somewhere. Yeah. So, oh gosh, this is hard. All right. At number five, I'm going to put the palpable energy in the room when the entire congregation is singing Silent Night mm. on Christmas Eve. Mm. I was listening to Silent Night this morning while I was getting ready to come here. Silent Night is in the best Christmas pageant ever um, when they have the pageant scene and the whole congregation is singing together. There is something so palpable, as I said, about a gathering of people united together around this idea of rebirth and about connection and about being together and being 
one. I think we instinctively want to be in harmony with one another. I think when we feel dissonance with other people, something in us says, that's not right. And, and for some people, it's like, maybe those are people that aren't right for you, right? But like when you feel moments of harmony, I think that's part of what it means to be human yeah. and what it means to be alive. And for me, some of the most beautiful, most harmonious moments that I can remember in my life are standing in my church as a teenager, as a young adult, as a dad, holding a candle with the lights turned down low and the strings playing as everyone sings Silent Night and then when the music drops and everyone just sings that last chorus together. And like the song ends and it's there's this moment. And if you've been there, you know, there's this moment of silence. But it's like the most electric silence you've ever yeah. felt in your life like there is energy that hangs in the air um and i have to believe that that energy is hope and that energy is hope uh, is joy and it is gratitude <laughs> um and it's community and it's harmony yeah so maybe the feeling is is harmony yeah um well that's going to be my number five that's really good and i did not put that on my list but when really? i but i remember watching grace uh, best Christmas pageant ever. I was like, I should have put that on my <laughs> list. That is the moment. Uh, so I'm very glad that you added it. And yeah. you know, the other thing that's another cool part of it is the tradition of it. Mm. That, sure, we have traditions that like, you know, on Thanksgiving we eat turkey, but everybody kind of does it a little different. Right. And, you know, I just feel like in our world, traditions are becoming fewer and far between mm. especially outside of like a family tradition right of like community traditions Ooh, good point and i think that most churches if you're of a, a, a person of faith do that on christmas eve is yeah. everybody sing silent night and there's the last verse is acapella mm. and there's something about you know especially for us uh, my family having moved so many times that we've gone to different churches, but there's always that moment. Yeah. And that moment sort of is the through line, which is really cool. So I, I think that's a But how a great cool one. I'm just this is just dawning on me, Eric, is that it's not just us. Right. In that building, in that moment. It's wherever times whatever time zone you're in. Yep. Hundreds of thousands of other people. And maybe doing... that's that maybe that's the electricity of that moment yeah. is that it is not it's just the, the unity everywhere. and harmony of that room. It's the unity and harmony that's existing across that town and across yeah. that state and across that region. That that's wild. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Very cool. I wonder if you can measure that in some way, like yeah. if there's some sort of like tuning fork or something that could yeah. read like a barometer that could read energy like that. Yeah, I think you'd be rich if you invented it. Uh, excuse me, I'll be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number four is going to be. Um, this is a good one. This one's not too emotional, but it's just a good one. Good Christmas feeling. Okay, it's going to be holding. That first great cup of hot chocolate or warm spiced apple cider, or for those of you who like coffee, peppermint a, re mocha. a really good peppermint <laughs> mocha or something. Uh, as we walk through a Christmas tree market mm. or just a Christmas market, especially in New York City, I got to give props where props is due. Uh, that time when it's truly starting to get cold, the drink is too hot for me. Because, you know, I don't do well with That's the hot right. liquids. Um, but I love that moment of, like, it's freezing cold outside. I can't drink the drink because it's too hot for me. Um, everyone is kind of shivering, but we all have sort of big smiles on our faces. And it's that feeling of warmth as a sense of home. Mm. The feeling of warmth as a sense of home. So, I mean, I love that that feeling of being at a Christmas market or at a Christmas tree farm or even just walking through Central Park. And, you know, that's something that we don't necessarily get as much here in Southern California, but there are, it does get cold enough at certain times. There's a place that we like to go, um, oh, what the heck is it called? That where they do, it's like tons of lights in a garden. Descanso Gardens. Descanso Gardens. Descanso yeah. Gardens. We, are, we love to go there. Um, and it, we do that as well. And we get the warm apple cider. And so you get a little bit of that feeling. But I don't know, there's something about that, the contrast of the warm and cold mm. at the same time that I just love. And so that's my, that's my number four feeling is warmth as a sense of home. I love that so much. And I, and I'm shocked that you didn't say how much you love peppermint mocha drinks. Not, <laughs> not a fan. Cause you hate them. I yeah. just don't. Uh, Sorry. I love it. Uh, anyway, um, that's such a great one. I love that so much. Um, and I think, I think I'm going to 
dovetail off of that okay. with my number four. And that is the comfort of walking into your childhood home around the holidays. The smells that feel so familiar and the memories that flood back. And you don't know that feeling until it's not your every day anymore. And it's just wild the way that our brains are able to hold on to those smells and to hold on to the, the sights. And I think more than anything, it's the feeling, right? Like I remember when I was uh, out of town f- for the first time, like leading up to the holidays back in 09, and my brother and I were in New York working on a project and, and I'd been gone for like all of October and November and I came back for a week and I left again. And then I came home uh, with my brother and I remember my sister posted like something on Facebook, our younger sister, Aaron, she wrote, my brothers, my brothers are back home and Christmas just, this is something about like, and Christmas just feels right again. Yeah. And you realize that it's not just you that it feels that way to you, that it feels that way to everyone who's in that space. And just like you walking into that room, that living room, that entryway, that kitchen, that dining room where you have so many moments that just like it impacts you walking into there personally and seeing those faces, them seeing your face and them feeling your energy in that space is equally as impactful for them. And, and I, I love it. Like I think back to when I moved away and came back, like being able to come home for Christmas and walking through that front door and immediately being greeted by that smell that I didn't know was so familiar until it wasn't around anymore and how it immediately just makes me think of how grateful I am and how fortunate I am to have had and still have this incredible family that have always been there for me. So it's not just at the holidays, it's everything that I've been through in my life, like being able to come back through that front door and be greeted by loving faces and embraces and the warmth of home is everything for me and especially uh, at the holidays. Yeah. And I will say that if you um, if you don't have that, that there are other ways to feel that because like I'm mm. not in any way trying to take away from that feeling for you because I, I know it to be a true a true emotion and, and feeling um, like for me, it's it's it kind of stinks that my no, and no, no shot on my parents, but like right. my parents don't live in our childhood home anymore. Right. And so like I don't have that you know and like i don't have and i think there are a lot of people that sort of like if your parents no longer live where you grew up you know that that can be a hard thing but i think that you can find that feeling that danny's talking about in the people that make you feel at Mm. home and and the whether that be friends or your parents just in a different physical Mm. space but i think the feeling of what you're talking about of that the world can be wild and crazy and Mm -hmm. unpredictable but that there is a place that where people just know you and you don't have to put on any kind of artifice or pretend and you just are yourself is is really special that's a great way of summing it up and i know that not everybody has that and i know how fortunate i am to have that and that's why i want to yeah to share it but it doesn't it's not necessarily the vessel right it's the people that you exist in that vessel or that space with totally um all right my number three this is a fun one Okay. This is the feeling of dancing in my living room to Christmas music as me and my wife and kids unpack and hang all of our Christmas ornaments and putting the star on the tree. Mm. Uh, so if I know we've talked about this, and if you follow me on social media at all, you know that every year yep. we post our Peterson family Christmas video <laughs> of us putting up the star on the tree because it started back when we lived in New York and Sophie was probably four miles was like two, or I guess she would have been five then. Um, and or even older, how old are my kids? Uh, 14 <laughs> Anyways, and nine, right? The, yes. They were, they were younger <laughs> is the point. Um, it's all a blur now, right. but it was one of those impromptu moments where Sophie was like, Hey everybody, it's me, Sophie Peterson. And I just want to say like, this is the Peterson family and we're putting up our tree and our ornaments. And miles That's was like best. kind of running around in his diaper and screaming. And I was trying to put the, the tree, the, the star on the tree and Lisa was like supporting me and we're laughing at the kids and the Christmas music is going and it's become a tradition that 
really is like one of my favorite times of the season because yeah. it is the four of us just like having fun together mm. and and really connecting and so the feeling uh is of joy and laughter mm. right so we a lot of times talk about the sort of more not solemn but the more like quieter cozy moments of christmas which is a huge part of it but also there is the moments of whether, you know, that I'm sort of talking specifically about that moment with my family, but I, I could sort of dovetail off of that. And that when I was a kid going to, when we would do our Dan, we called it Danley family Christmas, right. which is my mom's maiden name on that side of her family. Uh, where I had, you know, like a hundred cousins and like a hundred aunts and uncles and everybody, it was just wild and everybody's laughing and playing games and like out in the yard and in the garage and down in the basement and just like that chaos yeah. of family is is just so wonderful. Yeah. And it and a lot of times it does only happen at, at the holidays because we are busy and people live in different areas and and so there's something about the the chaos and the joyful chaos and the laughter chaos of family being together at mm. the holidays. Uh, and that's, I, I just think it's so, it's so wonderful because I think kind of going off what we were just saying with yours of that like sense of like, oh, mm. I'm home yep. is the first part of it. And then usually the next, you know, five minutes <laughs> after that is the chaos. Right. Right. But that's kind of the fun stuff too. And, and so uh, my number three is going to be the feeling of joy, laughter, and chaos. Oh. I remember, dude, you, you, the way you were describing like your childhood was exactly mine. Yeah. It was just cousins yeah. galore yeah. everywhere. And, you know, ants playing boggle in the dining room. Yep. And like, we're off, you know, doing a campaign of like Axis versus Allies. Or I didn't even like yeah. that game, but it was like, my cousins wanted to play it. So yeah. we played it. It was just like, and it felt like it was like that from 11 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night for, it was probably only like three days. But it honestly felt like an Forever. eternity, yeah. you know, and, and what what a beautiful gift, you know, to have that. Did I ever tell you that in, in recent years, uh, so my family still does Danley Family Christmas, and we've been able to fly in for a few of them. Uh, but even the ones that we don't fly in for, we always FaceTime with everybody. But my aunts and uncles have started to do a thing where they tailgate the Christmas party. <laughs> so if my, you know, if my uncle, my oh, uncle Dave hosted funny. a lot of times and... Uh, him and his wife, Teresa, will be like, all right, guys, the party starts at 10 or starts right. at 11. My other uncles will all get there with their families at like 8 in the morning, and they park outside the house. Oh, and they, my gosh. And they start like having you know beers and stuff, and they hang out outside of the house before the party starts. That's amazing. To sort of tailgate the <laughs> family Christmas party. I wonder how many other people do that. It's pretty great. And yeah. it's now like become a thing where they're like, you know, the people whose house it's at are like, we're not open yet. Like, stay out <laughs> there, you know. And they're like, let us in. We want oh, a party. That's great. It's awesome. I love that so, so much. And these are not uncles like in their 20s or 30s. These are men in their 60s and 70s. Who just love to get after it. Yes. I love that. Tailgating a Christmas gathering. A family I love party. It. That's yeah. beautiful. Uh, all right. Number three for me, these next three are hard because mm. they all matter so much to me um, in their own ways. Uh, and this one, I'm going to put it at three, but I feel like this one is only going to continue to climb higher on my list. And it ties into something that I've chatted about on the show before that really is, is a huge part of my core and who I am. And that's gift giving. Um, and so for me, the feeling is the joy and elation you feel when finding the perfect gift. Mm. Um, as I've chatted about on the show so many times, you know, I love finding unique gifts for people. I, I love looking at their list and it's like, if there's some stuff on there that I feel like, oh yeah, they need that. Let's get that for them. But for me, it's like, I love going off script and I love thinking about the person. I love thinking about moments that we have shared mm -hmm. together, moments I've noticed um, in their life. Uh, and one thing specifically that, you know, pops for me is something I gave, um, to Emerson for Christmas, which was, you know, uh, actually I'll share two stories real quick because I just want to be real with everyone. And one just popped into my head and this came to mind for me the other day. I was shooting a video for our social channels at Dollar Tree because you know, I got all their like mm -hmm. holiday decor out, hashtag not sponsored. And I was walking through the toy aisle 
and I saw like little Disney figurines, like princesses they loved. And it immediately stopped me in my tracks of filming. And it reminded me of like three Christmases ago when it was the pandemic and work was really, really slow. I wasn't making a lot of money. I was really nervous, you know, about just providing for my family in general, let alone like me being a person who loves giving gifts and wanting to give meaningful things to my kids, but not having a lot of resources to do it. And I remember going Christmas shopping at Dollar Tree. And I think because of something that exists in society about like where you should get gifts and how right. much money you should spend on people, I felt, I felt cheap. Yeah. That I'd like failed. And I remember I found this bin. This is so, see, when I tell you what it is and the fact that I'm getting choked up, you're going to look like, wow. My daughter, Emerson, was so into PJ masks. Yeah. And I found this bin of these little PJ masks figurines. And I found two of them, but I couldn't find her favorite. And I dug through every one of those until I finally saw that red of Owlette. Mm -hmm. And all I thought of was her. Yeah. And she didn't care that it, they cost me a dollar or whatever it was. She just thought that it was amazing when she opened up on Christmas morning that she got the three figurines of her favorite characters, right, yeah. you know? And it was a really humbling experience for me, but so impactful. And hopefully it resonates with so many people out there is that like, I know that we say, it's not about the price tag. It's not. It's the least amount of money I've ever spent on a gift for somebody in my life. But like the joy that I felt, the, like the determination I felt, I was like, if I don't find it this Dollar Tree, like I got to go to the next right. one, you know? And when I saw that Owlette toy, I was, I felt like a hero. Yeah. You know, and last year I remember walking through um, Marshall's because, you know, we love shopping at those places at the holidays. And I found this little treasure box a little music box that had rainbows on the outside and has a and a unicorn and emmy's favorite things in the world are unicorns and rainbows and she had just gotten into jewelry yeah and i thought man amongst everything that she's gonna get she's gonna love this thing the most yeah. i just i just knew it and i was so excited to give it to her and the look on her face when she opened it up and it played the music and she's like daddy i can keep all my treasures in this yeah. I was like, <laughs> that's awesome and she still does, you yeah. know, to this day. And it's like, so for me, the joy and elation you feel when you find that perfect gift for someone and then the payoff of seeing them open that thing is, um, is everything to me. Man. Yeah. Love it. Anyway. That's good. PJ That's Masks good is a great show. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. My number two, we're almost to the end here, folks. Um, number two is going to be, well, this is a good one. The feeling of walking out of church after the Christmas Eve service, it's a little cold. Family is dressed up. We're heading home for one present before bed. Wax is on our fingers from the <laughs> candles. We're wearing some matching outfit that we only wear once a year. And just that feeling of peacefulness. And uh, the feeling is possibility. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's, that, it's that sense of, you're going into Christmas Eve, so as a kid, you have that sense of possibility of like, what is, what's tomorrow going to be? Yeah. You know, what's Santa going to bring me? All that stuff. As parents, you're like, now it's too late if you want to buy something else, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> like now it's just time yeah. to enjoy the moment, enjoy the holiday. Um, usually, we're feeling, you know, full from a great experience that you know at, at Christmas Eve service we're together and that we're wearing our uniform of our Peterson family, whatever that is, you yeah. know, we're all wearing red plaid or what green plaid or whatever it is that year. Um, and again, it comes back to that being cold, right. And it's getting in the car, putting on, you know, some kind of chill Nat King Cole, Frank Sinatra or something like that. Everybody's happy. I, it's just that feeling of possibility of like, what is tomorrow going to bring, you know? Um, I just I always remember loving that feeling as a kid. I've loved being having that feeling as a dad with my own family. And I hope that I'm sort of creating that feeling for my kids of like when they when we leave church on Christmas Eve night that like what's gonna happen? Like you we're gonna read night before Christmas mm -hmm. before we get home and all those traditions that happen. So it's that 
that sense of of possibility. Mm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's beautiful. All right, uh, my number two is going to be another emotional one. Oh boy, shocker! <laughs> Buckle up. You're like, where do we go from the last one, <laughs> Danny? Uh, it's, what? Okay. It's the feelings, man. <laughs> um, this one hit me. <laughs> It's a hug from a loved one you haven't seen in a while. Mm -hmm. And the thing that hit me the other day that I had to write down was the thing about hugs is you don't know when that will be your last one. And I think back to Christmas in 2017 when we didn't know that was going to be my grandma's last Christmas. She was the matriarch of our family. She was just the kindest, funny, spirited, sweet woman you would ever meet. And I remember, and I may have shared this on the show before, but you know, Lynn and I had been trying to get pregnant for a while at that point, you know, almost three years unsuccessfully. And I remember sitting in the living room at my, my aunt and uncle's house and my grandma was sitting at the end of a table and I went and sat across from her and we were talking and Lynn came walking over and she looked at Lynn and she looked at me and she said, so when's the big day? And like my grandma a little bit towards the end, you know, was her, her brain wasn't all there. And I was like, well, grandma, you know that we got married, like, you know, a few years ago. And she goes, I'm not talking about the marriage. I know you're married. I'm talking about the baby. Mm hmm. And Lynn, Lynn got pregnant. And it's just like the timing of it all is like wild. And, you know, the holidays are so beautiful because they bring you together, you know, hopefully, whether they're friends or family or whatever, the, with the people you love the most. And you get to share powerful moments like that. And you get to share so many warm embraces over the years, you know. And the reason we've talked about this again, you know, many times, but like the reason it hurts so much when people like my grandma are no longer here, it's because of all those hugs. Yeah. And it wasn't just the Christmas Day hugs. It was the hugs when you hurt yourself. It was the hugs when you were sad. It was the hugs when you were confused, when you were lost. At Christmas is when you come back home. You go out. If you're like us and you're big dreamers and you're trying to conquer the world, you go out. But then the fact you have these arms to come back to that will embrace you and welcome you openly, always, and love on you is a gift. Um, so I think just that security maybe is, is, yeah. is the feeling that I tie with, with a hug yeah. from a loved one at Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. It is true. We got to sort of relish relish the people in the times that we have while we while we have them yeah you know 100% um all right my number one top holiday season feeling is and i've talked about this many times many times is that feeling on christmas eve sitting wrapping presents while i watch it's a wonderful life with a fire going and just the lights from the christmas tree and it's Christmas Eve, and it is the feeling of true happiness and peace. Mm -hmm. And it is any time we talk about on this show of like, why do you love Christmas? Like, what, <laughs> what's that Christmas feeling? For me, that's always the first feeling that I go to is just that sense of being in the spirit of the of the season, of trying to remember what it's all about. This, the message from the movie It's a Wonderful Life, you know, really gets at that of like, being with family and and loving the ones that you're with and and loving the life that you've been blessed to live yeah. with all the good and all the bad that comes with it um providing for your family for um I, i'm big on lighting and you know just i love being surrounded by just christmas lights and, and mm -hmm. firelight um it's just it's my favorite time of year every every year and even though it's not necessarily always with like my kids my kids are asleep in in this particular like specific micro moment that i'm talking about yeah they're a part of it because it's it's 
why I like it is because of them, you know? Um, so it's, it's that quiet moment on Christmas Eve is just my, my absolute favorite, favorite feeling of the holiday season. And it's, it's just true happiness and peace. It's the best. Yeah. Uh, before I reveal my number one, uh, if you are new to the show, I want to remind you to uh, subscribe. If you've stuck with us this long and you like listening to, uh, you know, middle-aged dads uh, <laughs> crying <laughs> about Christmas, then you're going to love this show. I promise you. <laughs> and I promise it's not all uh, tears, a lot of laughter here as well. But please make sure you uh, subscribe, rate and review wherever you're listening. Make sure you follow us uh, at Christmas Countdown Show on all the socials. Um, and we'll be back next week with another exciting yes. countdown list that will maybe we'll reveal it to the, the Patreon peeps sure. and on the social media here coming up. Um, but Eric, would you believe that my number one is your number one as well? Yeah! It is peace. Yeah. It is, for me, not needing to run around anymore. Yeah. Come Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, it's just being. You know, so much of life, uh, you know, especially nowadays, as we all know, it's like, you got to do this and then you got to do that and you got to check this. And there are notifications. There's always stuff going on that's pulling at our attention. And how beautiful that we have this season. And even if it's just two days, and maybe we can find a way to make it more, hopefully, as we move forward, but that you have two days where the world sort of just agrees that we're going to leave each other alone. And we're just going to be with those that we love most and be appreciative for all that we have, whatever it is that we have. Um, it is one of my favorite times of year. It is when my heart usually feels the lightest. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure, you know, many of you all know, know that feeling. Um, and, you know, and if it's something you're looking forward to this holiday season or maybe something that's been missing, obviously we want to wish that um, and, and, and put that out into your life and out into the universe that you have that feeling. Um, this year because there is there's nothing like it no it's just it's calm Tis the season and you don't realize how much calm and peace matters <laughs> until you don't have it yeah um, so as we are really on the precipice and we're in it all now and there's a lot of craziness going on you know find those peaceful moments it doesn't yeah. just have to be Christmas Eve and Christmas Day there could be peaceful moments um, wherever so so take advantage of them uh, when you find them and really just find take the quiet moments. moments. Yeah, yeah. And just look around and take it in. Yeah. As we've said before, you can't be nostalgic for what was if you weren't present for it. So be present for what is happening right now. Create those micro memories as yeah. Eric was saying, and, and have an incredible holiday season. Absolutely. We're here. It's happening. This was a good one. Yeah. Another good one. I'm very excited. Uh, so yeah, make sure you check us out next week. Yep. We'll have another exciting top 10 list. Thank you to Chris. Thank you to Emilio. Shh. Thank you to Danny. Um, thank you. And uh, we close every episode the same way by saying a very heartfelt and in your feels, Merry Christmas. And happy holidays. We'll see you on the next one. We'll what? <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it in, in your face. That's what I in you your were. face. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's fun. Oh, my gosh. That was great. <laughs>